Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I want to welcome you today to this edition of the, I don't know what show it is today. <laughs> uh, we got to talk just briefly, and it's only going to be about seven minutes. This is a case in the Supreme Court. We're going to come back to page 27, but let's let you see the case before the United States Supreme Court. Well, technically, this is a do not publish, uh, but this was found on the SupremeCourt.gov website, and this is uh, was placed in the docket. Now, I want to tell you what's going on here. This is a case in the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. No argument calendar. And this particular case involving bankruptcy and uh, plaintiffs, Michael and Candace Lynch. Please understand, Michael and Candace Lynch, my phone is ringing. This is somebody from incarceration, so y'all hold on. Okay. okay, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for that. That was a call from someone who is incarcerated. And I have given them, the ones who call me, the permission to call, and then I will. They're the only ones allowed to call me on Sundays, by the way. <laughs> Not even any other consultants get to call me on Sunday, but these guys get to call me on Sunday. If you've if you've all had the opportunity of watching um, Mayor of Kingstown, then you will see, I don't advocate everything about that show. There are certain things that I cannot watch in that show, but the when we get past all the stupid stuff, the parts that I can watch, it's a conscience thing. And it's also, my God says, no, just that simple. Um but the mayor of Kingstown, that depiction is what I've experienced over the three times that they have placed me in that wonderful environment. One time legitimate. The other two times, no justification whatsoever. So when I say that those guys who are inside don't have access to anything, I mean that. However, some of them are worthless. Now, people say, what do you mean worthless? Everybody, no, everybody isn't. There are some people on this planet who are literally just worthless. And if you don't come to grips with that shame on you for sitting up there making excuses for stupidity, I apologize. I don't get to determine who gets to live, breathe, eat, drink, or any of that stuff. But I will tell you, I can make a determination that some people are worthless. That's a fact. That's not my imagination. Some people have no worth whatsoever. That's why many of them will be destroyed, because the God I serve says that that's what he will do. If only you understood Hebrews, the ninth chapter, and Isaiah, the 45th chapter, how vessels are created, some for an honorable purpose and some for a purpose lacking honor. If only you understood the simplicity of that statement and why it had to be that way, then you will understand that I didn't say anything wrong. Okay, segue back to the motion. Oh, Mama, he's getting back to the motion. You can come back in the room now. Yeah, yeah, he's finished with all of that bull. Yep, yep, yeah, he's on the motion now. Okay. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, while I shut up next time I'm talking. I apologize. Whew, man, that fool gets on my... I, don't you dare start crying. Gets on my mother nerves. All right, y'all pay attention now. Because I don't play that. Okay. Now, they were versus Deutsche Bank, and they were in bankruptcy court. Then they appealed from the bankruptcy court to the district court. Now, the district court, every step of the way, every court has ignored them. Now, this was 2018. Lynches, I hope somebody can get this message to them because y'all need to go back into court and you're going to start from the superior court. See, they dismissed this with prejudice because of the argument being brought. Let me show you the argument. We're going to go back to page 27. Y'all don't mind? So hold on. Vente siete. Vente siete. Page 27. I didn't say appendix 27. I say a page 27. I want y'all to pay attention right here. See this right here? This is called, they call this an allonge. You heard the word allonge before? Well, let's allonge it right now. In support of their motion for summary judgment, the appellees, the lynches, submitted a copy of the lynches note bearing the following stamp. Pay to the order. 
of without recourse. Now, their note didn't have Deutsche Bank, but Deutsche Bank put their information on there. Oh, by the way, hold on. They don't have to write their name there. They don't have to put, this is not blank. Pay attention. It's already got the names. It's just not signed by anybody. But New Century Mortgage, that's their name. That line don't mean nothing. The name of the VP don't mean nothing. Why? Because at the bottom of the note, they signed it before a notary. So it doesn't have to have a signature. It just needed an endorsement with a name. Shh, don't tell nobody. Now, the Lynch's, of course, didn't bring that up. So let me do this for you. The bankruptcy found that the blank endorsement stamp was affixed to New Century with the intent on of accepting or authenticating the language therein. That's a lie. There was no authentication here. This was conversion. There was no acceptance going on here. This was conversion. Let's pay attention. The bankruptcy court stated that the, this conclusion was based on the fact. So he based his conclusion on some type of a fact. On the fact that obtaining of the allonge apparently, apparently, how is an apparent a fact? Apparently established that the intent was to transfer the note. Ladies and gentlemen, if the intent was to transfer the note, why didn't they just write, we hereby transfer the note to the following company with the following endorsement? Why didn't they do that? And that it shall not represent anything other than the intent to transfer the note. Because the Lynch's didn't bring in the UCC, the Federal Reserve Act. They didn't bring in congressional records showing that there couldn't have been any other intent because this was directly associated with the Federal Reserve Act. They didn't bring in the fact because they didn't know about the Federal Reserve Operating Circular numeral 10. I said we're going to have seven minutes. We'll go 10 because I was, you know, did the whole, you know, anyway. So what I want to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, we are hammering out the endorsement thing for our clients. Now, hold on. Let's show you something. Because I don't think y'all want to understand it other than this. The court stated that an instrument cannot be considered a promissory note unless it contains an absolute and unconditional promise to pay money. The court further noted that if an order to pay is included in the note, it would operate as a condition which would make the instrument a different type of instrument altogether. The same principles apply in Connecticut. Because I asked it for the state of Connecticut. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on. Let me let me explain something. Oh, no, this is perplexity. We were doing, that's how I found the case. So let's get back over to the Supreme Court. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay attention to something. Ooh-wee. Promissory note is unconditional. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is an order. You can't ignore an order. You must obey an order, so that's a condition. Promissory notes must be unconditional. The moment they place pay to the order on the note, they have incorporated a condition, which means it's no longer a promissory note and can no longer be evidenced as an outstanding debt. Now, I'm going to give this to you. Go back and listen to exactly what I just said. I'm going to give this to you. Don't say I haven't helped you out. I just can't give you everything because this is what we're doing for our clients. Ladies and gentlemen, if a promissory note containing a pay to the order cannot be used as evidence for an outstanding debt, then that means that there is no evidence on the record showing that the borrower has failed to pay. In fact, they have not provided any evidence on the record by placing such an endorsement that they have not received the funds from the Federal Reserve as required by the Act of June 12, 1945, and the Federal Reserve Act, Section 16, Paragraph Number 2. And until they can do that, they have no standing in any court. Shh, don't tell nobody. This information is vital. I wish you'd understand what's being said. Go back and listen to the last three minutes. Perhaps you might get something from it. Gotta go, y'all. Ten minutes is what I promised.
Good.